the most simple, but the hardest on this entire list. And I really believe that it's keeping me currently right now um, from getting to the next level in my business. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing uh, what I would do differently. Uh, if I was to start again today, what would I do differently? So be sure to watch until the end of the video because this video literally has the ability to save you a ton of time and a ton of money. So let's get right into the list. All right, so if I was starting my business all over today, the number one thing I would do is invest more into myself and I would do it sooner. So that includes reading books, that includes uh, listening to podcasts, that includes watching YouTube videos, and that includes hiring a business mentor uh, sooner. I don't think there is a better return on your investment than investing into yourself. Uh, the, the things that you can learn, they compound on each other and you just get better over time. And it's not like you lose uh, you know, I learned X, Y, and Z over the past six years. I don't lose those things. Like I have that experience. Uh, and like I said, it compounds on itself. So I would invest in myself sooner than I did. All right. Number two is I would trust my gut more often and sooner. Now I think about this in terms of pivoting. There are several um, pivoting, actually, there's a lot of pivoting in small business. Um, and I've had to pivot a lot. You know, I, I think something is going to work. It didn't work the way I thought it was going to, but this worked. So let's pivot this way and then let's pivot this way. And so there's a lot of pivoting and a lot of times, um, I'm hesitant to make big decisions. And even though I think that's natural, but even though that I, I know it in my gut and I'm like, you know what, this is the direction I need to go. Another thing that I've identified with this hesitation is it usually involves like trusting my gut and making a decision. It usually involves going a new direction, which is uncomfortable because I'm unfamiliar with it. So it's really just wanting to stay in my comfort zone. But obviously what that does is that doesn't, I don't grow um, when I'm comfortable. So if I was starting again today, I would trust myself and trust my gut sooner. Number three, I would identify my customer and what their needs are before building an audience. So one thing that I've learned is that the most efficient way, now, I don't know if this is 100% realistic, but it's kind of, it's the goal. Uh, the most efficient way to sell a product, whatever that product is or service, is to identify the person first. Okay, this person needs this. And then making that, and then selling it to that person. I think a lot of times, myself included, I've made things, whether that be physical products, whether that be content, whether it doesn't matter what it is, I've made things and then I've went and found the person um, or tried to find the person when it would have been a lot more efficient, uh, both time and money efficient, if I would have identified that person first, identified their problem and made a product for that person. I think here on YouTube, it's a prime example. Uh, if you do your research first, uh, if you're going to create YouTube videos or content, um, if you do your research on a niche first uh, and figure out everything that you can about that niche, what their pain points are, what they, what they want, what they don't want, and then start making content for that specific person, you'll be a lot more successful, way more successful, than if you just start making content blindly and then kind of pivot a million times and eventually find your niche. Um, it's just a lot more efficient to do it the other way. Now, I pivoted a hundred times, a million times, whatever, uh, and that's, I, I've, I've, it's kind of worked, but it would work a lot better if I did it the other way. Number four, I would spend a whole lot less time trying to figure out an easier way to do something. I think this is human nature, again, that we uh, normally wanna take the path of least resistance. I think that's kind of like the default mode. I'm not saying everybody does that, but that's kind of default. Um, and it's been no different for me. So if I would have just did the hard thing, the hard way, it would have been done and over with way before I figured out an easier way. And then I could have taken that, what I learned from the hard way, and got better every time. And it becomes easier and it becomes more efficient. Now, a lot of times there isn't an easier way. You just have to just buckle up and you have to do the hard thing. 
All right, so number five is the most simple, but the hardest on this entire list. And I really believe that it's keeping me currently right now um, from getting to the next level in my business. And that is focus. Something struck me about this. I was reading an article the other day. Someone interviewed uh, billionaires, uh, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, their investors, billionaire investors. And they interviewed them separately and they asked them both the same question. They said, uh, if you could sum up your success in one word, what would it be? And they both said the same exact answer separately and they summed it up in the word focus. And I think it is so simple um, that people overlook it and they feel like they gotta be a million different places. But if you can put concentrated effort for X a period of time, uh, in, in Warren Buffett's case, 90 years or whatever, um, that is where progress is made. So this is something that I'm really trying to work on is staying focused on my mission, staying focused on Andy Bird Builds and helping people make money with their CNC and not getting caught up in all the million different distractions that are coming my way. Hey, if you're getting value out of this video, hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe button. That way I know that you are getting value out of this video and I can make more content just like this. All right, number six, what I would do if I was starting my business today is give myself more grace. I would be more patient with myself. Uh, I am my own worst critic, my own worst enemy, probably like a lot of you, and uh, but it really doesn't do any good. When I'm trying something new, I almost expect myself to be better at it then I am. And then I get frustrated because like, Andy, you should be better at this. Well, no, you dummy, you shouldn't because you've never done it before. <laughs> but having that mentality literally does nothing for me. There's no benefit, it is all negative. So I would be pa more patient with myself and give myself more grace. All right, number seven is I would get more customer feedback. I think this is something that businesses in general overlook, uh, but it's an absolute gold mine. If you can, uh, put a product out and get direct customer, uh, target customer feedback and iterate on that and not take it personally and make the best possible product for your customer. Like that is a win-win. Win, win, win. And I think one, it's very time consuming. Just listening and, and, and slowing down and listening to your customer uh, literally could be the key to unlocking your business potential. Number eight is I would hire professionals sooner, meaning I would hire an accountant, I would hire a graphic designer, I would hire a video editor, those types of people that do one thing really, really well. Now, obviously most small business owners can't just run out and hire all these people unless you just have a pile of cash sitting around, then go for it. Um, but the normal small business owner is wearing a ton of different hats and you kind of have to do it all. But I'll tell you a secret to unlocking um, your business, full business potential, is hiring people that are better at you at a certain thing. Sure, you can take the time to learn every single skill, but you are only one person, and at some point, your time is gonna be the limiting factor. Every time I have hired one of these positions, I have always thought, man, I wish I would've done that sooner. So it would take me 10 hours to edit a video, I hire a video editor, and it takes them two hours to edit and I have to pay them X amount of money, um, but I just freed up 10 hours of my time for what I'm paying them. So now I can take those 10 hours and I can develop new products or I can mar market more. Um, I can go, I have that, I'm multiplying my time. So I would hire professionals that have specific skill sets um, to free up more of my time and I would do that as soon as I could. Number nine is I would give my mind more space to think. Our brains need white space, need blank space in order to process information to come up with our next best idea. If you're anything like me, I feel like, I naturally feel like that I have to keep my nose to the grindstone and I have to just crank out work. It's kind of like just a battering ram. You know, just if I hit the wall enough times, it will come down, um, which can be true, but there is another way uh, and I feel like if uh, what I've learned is the times that I've given myself, uh, given my mind some time to breathe, to process, to think, uh, 
whether that be a bike ride, whether that be a walk, whether that be a drive, whether that be a long shower, um, I've always came away with better ideas than I had before. So I would give myself some space to process and think about things and come up with ideas. All right, so number 10. The thing I would do if I was starting all over today is I would do the hard thing first. I would do the thing I didn't want to do first. I kind of categorize work into two categories. There is easy work and hard work. Easy work, think about low hanging fruit, think about busy work, um, work that makes you feel productive at the end of the day, um, but doesn't actually, when you step back and think about it, doesn't actually move the needle, right? Doesn't actually make forward progress. Uh, and then hard work is work that I don't wanna do work that makes me uncomfortable, work where I have to learn something new uh, or have to go talk to somebody or, um, you know, just those uncomfortable things that we shy away from. Those are the things that actually move the needle in the direction that we wanna go. So something that I found to be effective is to do the hard work first. Like you set the things that you don't wanna do uh, at the beginning of the day. Like I'm gonna do these things first. And then after that, I'm gonna do all of the other work. And that way you force yourself, like I gotta do this work before I can do this other work. So that way every day you are forced to do hard work, but every single day you're actually moving the needle forward. Because normally what happens is I make a whole list and I do all the things that I wanna do. And then it gets me into that point where I'm like, well, I didn't really, I, I feel like I made progress, but I didn't actually make progress. I've learned over and over again that the only thing between me and where I want to go is just a ton of freaking hard work. Hard work that necessarily isn't fun. Uh, this reminds me uh, in college, I had a friend, we were, I don't know what we were talking about, but uh, he told me that his, something that his dad used to always tell him growing up is like, if, if work was supposed to be fun, then they wouldn't call it work. It would call, be called something else. And I know that's really simple, but it's true. Work is work. I think it's really easy to be like, oh, I want to have fun working. Well, that's not necessarily the goal of work. Work is, is, is not the same as fun. So cheers to all you out there doing hard work um, to get where you want to go. If you want to learn more about my CNC business and journey, click this video right here and I will see you over in that video.